TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me, this is the channel. If we go live, you miss it. That's where you catch the highlights. Don't forget, we do got merch and we do got a Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. Yeah. All of that information is down in the link below. It's called Linktree. Just go to the description, hit that link, and all of that will pop up. This is the Billion Dollar Scam. BBC World Service. It's from five months ago. Somebody else told me I should do this. It was already in my list, so I'm going to do it right now for you. Let's get into it. These partygoers are scammers. They work for an organized crime group. No. That's nothing new, party goers being scammers. <laughs> That's the elite world in Florida. Known as Milton. They've had a good year. They've taken hundreds of millions from victims. And now they're celebrating. The scammers make so much, they can afford expensive sponsorship deals to make their brands look reputable. The fact that they uh, sponsored Leeds Football Club, I just took them as being a proper investment platform. They just want to take your money off you. There were tens of thousands of victims across the world. A lot of these people were just like the rest of us. They're no scam and Leeds football team. Didn't they do that to the United Center too? There was like a group that, like a fake like Bitcoin type situation where they did that as well. It's tough. Smarter, no dumber. There was never any chance for all those customers. It's all a lie. I'll go undercover to find out how they convince people to invest. How are you, darling? How is everything going? We team up with a man who's been on the inside. My life changed radically. I have to hide now and think about security. We join Europol raids on call centers selling the scam. You don't understand anything I'm saying, even though you just responded to me in perfect English. No. Did you know that this was a scam? No. And we travel to the former Soviet states where it all began. Hi, Simona. I know who this guy is. Let's just call him Mr. Red. It took us over a year to peel back the layers of shell companies hidden offshore to identify for the first time the big fish we believe are getting rich on misery. Losing $30,000 to a bunch of scammers, I was absolutely devastated by it. And it's not like they're going after just big companies. They're going after people, like little people too, little fish. $30,000 from a 60-year-old woman, like... That's the end of it for her. She's out of there. Hello? Hi. Hi. Hi, this is Jen. Who's this? My name is Simona Wineglass, and I'm an investigative reporter. And I think I'm about to be scammed. 80% of my clients here started to think I like you. They don't have any experience also in trading. I'm pretending to be a school teacher called Jen, and I've signed up to a number of trading platforms to see how this scam works. This software will go to scan and analyze the five major assets in the financial market 24 hours a day, five days a week. Sounds fantastic. Software like this normally costs a fortune, but can I trust her? Nah, seriously, that type of software that scans the, the tra good trades and bad trades 24 hours a week, that could get you rich. They selling a dream. They knew what they was doing. And where, where are you calling from? I'm calling you from London, UK. Oh, you're calling, but you have such an interesting accent. Where did you, where, where are you from originally? Oh, uh, well, basically I'm not uh, from UK. I'm just migrated here because of this job. We will be going to give you a CV 
your account manager who can teach you how to use the software successfully and show you how much profit you can make on a weekly basis. Okay. okay? I know all about call center scams. I've been investigating them for years. Now, I'm posing as a teacher who wants to make some extra income to help pay the bills. I'm pretending to be Canadian, as the scammers no don't cap, call she Americans looked like, a, like uh, me. Like a teacher. Because, here in Washington, D.C., a team of prosecutors successfully brought down one such scam, sending the woman running it to prison for 22 years. How big was the problem at the time? when you started investigating? Like, why did you even... Not even gonna lie, scammers are some of the worst people, bro. They peer on people's weaknesses, they play on your situations, and they just get at you for everything because they know you need it. Some of the worst people. And take it on. Just in the handful of organizations that we were focusing on initially, there were tens of thousands of victims across the world. I mean, there was one victim who had reported losing $400,000. A lot of these people were like, just like, you know, any of the rest of us. They're no smarter, no dumber professionals. Quite a few people who worked for the government in had long careers in the government who would, ended up being defrauded by scams like yeah. this. Three years ago, I was part of an international investigation with the Swedish newspaper Dagens Nyheter. For the first time, we revealed the existence of a criminal group called Milton. Now, I want to expose the senior men really behind it. Back then, we discovered Milton's front line, where scam call centers, where hundreds of young people in Eastern Europe are recruited with promises of big money and a little luxury. For each new victim, they receive a bonus and a hefty percentage of the money they persuade them to invest. Then, the investigation had an undercover mole employed in a Milton call center in Kyiv, Ukraine. Watch football all season long. When the investigation came out, he went into- I'm not gonna lie, this is going deep. They in Scandinavia, ain't that where the Avengers were shot? Like, y'all need to call Thor for these scammers or something. He got y'all. To witness protection. We tracked him down to see if he could help us go further and identify the masterminds behind the scams. <sighs> we have to protect Alex's identity. We've changed his name and voice. He's paid a heavy price for going up against the criminals in the Milton Group, and now has to live in a secret location away from friends and family. Despite the risks, he's determined the criminals see justice. I hope that with his inside knowledge, we'll be able to piece together the clues to reveal how the criminals work. During those months, yeah. when you were undercover, were you ever scared? Yes, I was terrified of getting caught. It was very stressful, psychologically. I decided to stay there just to discover for public about this crime and to help police get evidence. So even though there was a huge expose involving dozens of newspapers risking his life. around the world, Milton Group is still operating. Yes. Think about it. When you exposing somebody this big, they they'll do anything to protect themselves. Don't 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 think they won't. They will. They still operating, and um, they started to make bigger money. As a student in Russia, Alex was trained in cryptography. He's now using those skills to follow the money. In your estimation, how much money has the Milton Group made since it started? About one billion. About one billion dollars. Since 2017. You're saying 100 percent of people. Hey, get get the. F they were scamming up. They scammed a billion dollars, and and when did this come out? This was five months ago. They scammed a billion in th five years. 
Six years? Five years. Man, they moving wild. People lost money, meaning they lost at least some of their money. Yes, not a single cent went into a real trade. What happened to the money once people deposited in their account? Victims think that they have a real account with the company, but there is not really any trading, just a simulation. Fraud is larger than it's ever been. Last year, victims reported losing four billion pounds in the United Kingdom. Most people never come forward. Oh, here we go. Hi, this is Jen. Hi, Jen. This is Fauci. Oh, I'm so glad we're finally speaking. With Alex's help, I'm now talking to the Milton scammers. Patrick works for one of their brands, Coinevo. How are you, darling? How is everything going? I wish all the best for him and you too, darling. Thank you. Thank you very okay, much. So, so uh, how, is, how is your day for today? I want to see what sort of promises they make to persuade me to invest. How much money do you... So since it's a scam, they're going to make it sound cushy every bit. They've done their research. They, they've scammed a billion. They've done their research. Do you think I could make in a month doing this? These kind of returns are impossible to promise. To show how the scam works, I deposit $500 in Bitcoin and agree on another time to talk to Patrick. The Milton Group. No lie, it sounds like a typical scam. Like, she's that first $500 in Bitcoin, if it comes back with the return, that's when they build that trust and they send more. And then that's when they get that scam ran on them. You know what I'm saying? But you've got to build that level of trust. I know how the game go, man. It's sad has thousands of victims. Many lose much more than the BBC is allowing me to put in. I'm just gonna okay, transfer the money to you. Okay, one second. I'm on my way to meet Londoner Barry Burnett, who started making 10 pound trades after signing up with a prominent Milton brand, EverFX. When he saw how well his portfolio appeared to be doing, he invested more. He told us he let his trading advisor take control of his computer and trade for him. This should never happen. Then he started losing money. And this is when the Milton fraudsters asked him to invest even more. Put some more money in, yeah? I'm double up. If you put 25,000 pounds in, then you could wipe out your losses and make a profit. And I said, no, I'm not doing that, absolutely not. I just want to just bring my losses down to a manageable amount and I'm gonna get out. And um, I, I must have got at least half a dozen calls from half a dozen individuals in the space of about two hours. My phone just kept on blowing up, begging me basically to put some more money in. Barry? That's a red flag. When you say no and they call you a billion times, that's a red flag, buddy. He says he lost over 10,000 pounds. His experience fits a pattern. What if I told you that we've spoken to insiders at the company and they told us it was all a scam? I am horrified. I'm numb. I can't believe this because I was never really going to get that back. So I could almost think that the moment I put that 10 grand in the account, that was it. It was just gone, you know? It's disgusting on every level. You know, it's just, it just makes me sick to think about it, to be honest, yeah. I, I can just imagine the, 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 the misery they, they've inflicted on other people's lives. So how do these companies pull it off? How do they get so many people? Bro, I know some of y'all know, like, like literally, like getting robbed, like point blank range, strong armed or with a, or a, like it, it's, it's pain. Like your hard earned money getting taken from you. This is the same thing. Like, you can cry. Like, this is send somebody into a depression. For real. ...able to trust them. The 
Granberry used, EverFX, became established through a high-profile sponsorship deal with one of Europe. EverFX became established through a high-profile sponsorship deal with one of Europe's biggest football clubs, Sevilla FC. Here is how you. Are these the same people that got uh, the Miami basketball stadium to name them, name them after them? The same people. Two of Spain's biggest clubs. It's match day. Two of Spain's biggest clubs are playing their local derby. Over two years, the Milton Group spent an estimated 7 million euros with Sevilla FC to promote their brand EverFX, including glossy promo videos like this. Sevilla even used some of their biggest players to un craziest part about it is it don't take much money to do this video all you need is a, a, a good camera with a great lens and a great editor and you in there you could fake this all day unwittingly sell Milton's brand I didn't know much about trading but EverFX taught me everything I needed to know Forex and football are both unpredictable industries but these guys have all the necessary material to help out new traders like myself so thank you, EverFX. EverFX, main global sponsor of Sabia Football Club. Their sponsorship deal finished soon after the UK's Financial Conduct Authority banned EverFX, but not before they had ripped off 17,000 investors in Spain alone. Lots of the club's fans know people who have lost money on these scams. Tenemos que exigirnos un mínimo de, de, de conocimiento y de esencia porque el hecho de que una marca se asocie a nuestro club también eh, nos daña. Hey Mark. I'm good, I'm in Seville. On a side street, I went to talk to someone who also investigates these scams. Mark Solomons works for an Australian investigations firm that tries to get money back for victims. The thing with Milton Group is that they tend to sort of, they'll, they'll hit people up for a certain amount and then they move on and they kind of like to work in bulk. I mean, the EverFX logo, it's hard to imagine that most of the fans haven't been exposed to it. it. It must be because it's giving them access to a particular demographic that's maybe um, prone to gambling. The brand awareness that these deals generate is essential in making these scams appear reputable. We found that 40% of the English Premiership signed sponsorship deals with suspected scam brands outside the Milton Group. They got us, y'all? They, the, they got Liverpool? I can't believe we fell for that. That's tough. This includes Chelsea, Everton, Fulham, Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester City, Southampton, and Tottenham. They got Tottenham too. The man them didn't ride. The man them didn't go swooshed. They were all either investigated by regulators, fined by regulators, investigated by police, or banned by the Financial Conduct Authority including FXVC, who sponsored Leeds United until 2021, when they were banned by the Financial Conduct Authority. While Leeds made promos like this, FXVC scammed hundreds of thousands of pounds while using its sponsorship to look legitimate. The idea that um, we'd been manipulated by a company like that would really make me sick to my stomach. Quite upset because it was quite heavily advertised as well. And it was also, um, you, you could do it off the, the website as well. So, not very happy to be honest. Yeah. After seeing that FXVC sponsored Leeds United, Phil and Joyce invested £1,000 with them. The call centre soon got to work. 
His words to me were, I will take care of you as though you were my own mother. One of the main things he was saying, Phil, you do realise you're going to be a millionaire. Despite the extraordinary promises, the couple say they believed FXVC was a reputable... Crazy, now they got them out here window shopping. They, they hit different. I'm going to take care of you like you're my own mother. You're going to hell, buddy. Honor thy mother and thy father and you'll live a long life. You're going to hell. That's tough. You scamming your mom? trading platform. Why would they allow that sort of company to support Leeds United, a premiership football club? Why? It just doesn't make sense to me. So I took it at face value that they were a good, reputable company. Phil invested more, betting £100,000 that the price of Bitcoin would go up, and his account showed an £85,000 profit in a weekend. So they put in... Or pulled. No, 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 no. He's a, like 85,000 profit. I'm gone. See ya. I doubled my money. I don't want to risk it no more. I'm up out of here. More and more. He t said all along that you can have your money out. There's no problem to have your money out whenever you want. But when they started losing money, their account manager told them their balance had fallen below a threshold. So to get their remaining money out, they would have to put more in. So they did, and then lost it all. We had lost £341,000 within seven days. Oh, my. I don't care who they hurt. God, you almost lost a half a million dollars in seven days. Yeah, they, they, uh, did you get your money back? How can you even get, begin to get your money back in this situation? They don't care who they take money off. They don't care. I knew he was really deeply distraught over it. And I knew he would be humiliated and ashamed. He, he literally hung on to me that day, just apologising and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was stupid, I'm stupid. Leeds United have got a duty of care to make sure the people they're associated with are legitimate companies and not uh, doing these sort of scams. Leeds United told us, as soon as we were made aware that FXVC had lost their licence, the agreement was terminated. FXVC denied any wrongdoing and told us they fully complied with the ruling by the FCA. The Premier League clubs that responded said deals were ended early, were not renewed, or that allegations against the potential scam companies only came after the sponsorship deals had ended. And Seville FC told us that once the contract ended, there was no more contact with EverFX. While these shiny videos may be history, of course they're not taking accountability. They don't want that on their on their resume. You know, we didn't know. All these allegations came after after us. We didn't have no idea. No one to date from EverFX or FXVC has been prosecuted for these scams. One of the reasons is that criminal investigations are highly complex, expensive, and the scammers seem to always be one step ahead. In Britain, None of the victims we've spoken to have had their cases pursued by the police. Just, you just out of half a million, that's crazy. Oliver Bullo was a reporter in the former Soviet Union, but now writes about money laundering and the offshore world. Am I surprised to hear that the British police have done nothing about these reports? No, that is wearily familiar. <laughs> oh, um, if you're famous, they'll take an interest. But yeah, if it's if just, nobody is you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith have lost their retirement savings, 40 grand, 50 grand, 60 grand, yeah, send in a report and you know, nothing will happen. Oliver believes that the scammers hide behind a complex series of offshore companies to protect their true identity. At that point, it's a publicity thing. Everybody who's scared of bad publicity. Somebody famous will get the publicity on you. They have the reach. The average Joe Smoke does not have the reach. If you are coming at it as an investigative journalist, or more likely 
as a law enforcement agent, you have to go to every one of those jurisdictions, write them a letter, a formal process, and then receive information about the ownership of that company. That may take you six months, it may take you a year, it may not be possible at all. So the point of the complexity is to make things incomprehensible and essentially to try and force other people just to give up. I'm not about to give up, but I do need some help. I'm not even gonna lie to you, I can hear it in her voice that she is determined. She is the type that say, I'm gonna get you fired and she is going to get you fired. I hear you. You this is you got your perfect job, ma'am. In a sleepy town in Germany, I've heard the fight back against Milton is underway. It's an unlikely hub for the high-tech fight against the scammers. The cybercrime unit here, in contrast to the UK, is making arrests across Europe and beyond. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Bamberg. Thank I'm, you. Know, you. Using digital techniques, the team can follow the crime through the dark portals of the deepest parts of the internet and chase down those perpetrating it. It's directed by public prosecutors, methodically gathering evidence and forensically tracing the huge sums of money it generates. They are operating like professional, legal companies, and that's what we say, this is organized crime. And how much money are some of these large- It's shocking that they can operate like that and not be legal and nothing really be done, like, immediately. Like, I don't even understand. It's just, when you get to a certain level of money, you, you almost can be untouchable. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's sad. Larger organized crime groups bringing in? Probably hundreds of millions per year. Investigating financial scams like these means following the money. So let's say we have one victim of whatever platform, mm -hmm. and we know he um, transferred his money to this bank account of whatever company here in Germany. And then we have all the transactions of the company, of the bank account, and we see there are so many other victims from Germany and Austria and Great Britain and France who all send their money on this bank account, but those cases are still unreported. And our biggest problem is that we only see the reported cases. Their investigation is making headway. Last year, they seized these assets from another criminal group who also operated investment scams. But the methodical gathering of evidence takes years. In the very beginning, we weren't sure at all whether we will identify any suspects and that there will be any arrest ever. But after three years, we see there are dozens of arrests and we were able to identify really huge networks of scammers. I wanted to know if the prosecutors were aware of who was behind the Milton Group, so I had to ask. Who were the big bosses of the Milton Group? No comment. No comment. <laughs> Good evening. Hi. Wait, but why no comment? Is it too early in the investigation? They still doing their research or something? Like, why no comment? It's Antoine from Kind of Evil. I'm speaking with the madam or Mrs. Jennifer Christen. Yes, you are. You're speaking with Jen. Okay. Hi, Chad. I am Antoine Medichan, calling you from England. I've been passed up the chain to a retention manager. They go, they try and they best. All her initial investment was $500. I guess every penny counts for them. It's the same job that passed up the chain to a retention manager. It's the same job that Alex had while working in the call center in Ukraine. Then, he sold a few different brands, but he has since discovered many more that follow the same pattern. He unearthed scores of different brands, but they all had identical sign-up pages, exactly the same wording in their terms and conditions, and exactly the same login pages. Alex has then discovered that they all share the same unique code in their design, 
and the same online deposit page where clients can choose to invest with dollars, pounds. You know, it's crazy because if you're not looking that hard, you're not going to find this. It really takes an investigation group to come through and do this. Like to the average Joe Schmo, they're not looking at all of this. They're not running it up against other pages and checking for similarities and things of that nature. They're just trying to double their money quick and easy. Pounds or cryptocurrencies. EverFX has the same sign-in page and the same code and the same script and the same structure yeah. as all these other websites. Yeah. So you're 100% sure it's a Milton Group website? Yes, I'm 100% sure. Okay, let's look at how many brands are there total. 152. Wow. It's a huge brand network, but are there any other connections? We decided to follow the money. Like me, a lot of people now hand over Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is on a public ledger, which means you can follow where it goes. So it should be simple, but it's not. Because there are thousands and thousands of crypto wallets that channel the money. When I started this journey, I put my money into the brand Coin Evo. Victims have been doing this for years, putting money into other brands, including EverFX the brand that scammed Barry. The money then moves through a complex system of wallets, but ultimately ends up in just a few dozen, we suspect, owned by the people behind the scam. We don't know for sure who owns these wallets, but mapping this network is useful because it shows these brands are linked. We saw my Coinevo money joining a money route from EverFX here, I feel like they just basically made a huge, like, pyramid scheme. That's what it looked like. That's what it looked like and sound like. Before continuing through to the rest of the network. So this is a trade that I opened. And I'm not, like, doing so well. I'm kind of, like, in the red. I've been trying to contact Coinevo, but have heard nothing back. Perhaps they know who I really am, or are only interested in people who've invested more. Antoine still doesn't get back to me, so I decide to cut my losses and withdraw my money. Then I get this email. Hi, Jenny. The passport you've sent us is a fake. I assume you know this. So go f yourself, pretty please, with sugar on top. Despite chasing, I never got back the money that was still in the account. Bro, no they wasn't sending out emails like that. Ain't no way. They was really playing games at that point. She doing this for investigative purposes and she looked it sick. Like she looked it blue. She was over it. So how can we find out who's behind these crimes? When Alex, the undercover mole, worked for Milton, he recorded their 2020 New Year's Eve party with a secret camera in his watch. Are there clues here about who the Milton Group masterminds are? The audio reveals a man called David who was crowned the father of Milton. When I worked on the first investigation, we identified this David as Georgian national David Todua. To simplify the complex connections in this network, we're going to give him a nickname. Mr. Orange. These are photos from his now deleted Instagram feed, showing him at the party with other senior figures of the Milton group, and him posing with guns. So where does Mr. Orange fit into the wider Milton organization? Two years after the party, he has an office in a new call center in Kyiv, selling EverFX and other Milton brands. Ukraine is clearly important for their whole operation, 
but they, like everyone else, were about to get a shock. Ukraine was invaded. I was just about to ask, like, since Ukraine is such a hub for what they got going on, how did the war and the invasion affect them? But they got it covered. And Alex, keeping an eye on scammers from his hiding place, was seeing evidence online that call center staff were fleeing the war. I have not been keeping up with that situation and that looked gruesome, that's tough. One place he's seen job adverts is in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia. I've come to the capital Tbilisi to meet local investigative reporter Nino Bakradze. So, Nino, we've come to Georgia because we think that this has become one of the hubs of the companies behind the call centers. Are you sure it's a, like a current information? We have an insider who thinks that they're getting people in Ukraine to relocate to Georgia. A few months ago, uh, there was a big scandal related to the call centers and the prosecutor office shut down several offices. But since then, we know that the area is clean and the call centers moved away from the country. There was the investigation. You might have thought wrong, ma'am. <laughs> She's here telling you. Don't get offended. Like, let's check it out. Let's investigate. Story, you can see the... I know who that is. This one? Yes. I know who this guy is. His name is Michal Benimini. I've investigated him before. Benimini was charged in Israel with tax evasion, but never showed up for his trial. I think that we need to investigate for ourselves. Our own research shows that Michal Benimini, let's call him Mr. Red, registered an early Milton brand, Cap MB. So this suggests that he's been involved for a long time. I'm curious, but it doesn't take me no long to come back with more. Nice to see you again. She's found evidence of a call center, and it's active. You were right. It's called MG Capital. MG Capital, the company founded by Yosef Mgeladze four years ago. I found his ID scan and his email address in the business registry. And I ain't gonna lie, she be putting that on. She be fresh. I ain't gonna lie, she got a little fashion sense, don't she? I have a contract of rental agreement, uh, which is signed by Yosef Mgeladze, and he signed the rental agreement in 2019. We identified Yosef Mgeladze's profile on Facebook. <laughs> then we found out the people on the photos. So we found out the person who worked at the call center, and we persuaded her to talk to you. We met the young woman who'd worked at MG Capital in central Tbilisi. She doesn't want to talk on camera, so we're not showing her face and have changed her voice. Even now, it is really hard for students to find a new job with a good salary. When I started this job, uh, I didn't know what we were doing in reality. I thought we really were helping people, but when I um, get to understand what the really was going on, I really felt bad for those people who got scammed. Ivana was told to choose a fake English-sounding name and never reveal that she was calling from Georgia. She was selling a Milton brand. It felt really good that I could get out of there before I could do something bad to someone. But who is Joseph Megaladze, our Mr. Green? Can his other business links tell us anything about this network? We already know that he founded and used to own MG Capital, which... We got Mr. Green and Mr. Orange. And is that red? Seems to have sold Milton Brands. 
But Mr. Green also founded this company. Its directors have included two men who seem connected to the network. This guy, Mr. Blue, owned a company called Naspay, which has provided tech to the Milton Group brands, a company that he sold to Mr. Orange, the gun-loving David Todua. And together with Mr. Pink, Mr. Blue is senior in EverFX, as well as other crucial Milton tech companies. And finally, some of these key companies operated from the same building that housed Mr. Orange's new office in Kyiv. This is all looking very cozy. The offshore- I was just gonna say it was kind of confusing, but when the, when the stream panned out, it got clear. All right, all right, I'm following. Our world is opaque, with some people spending a fortune deliberately muddying the waters of their operations. But, they can't be sure that the past will stay buried forever. As the world wakes up to the revelations of the Panama Papers, we lost quite Back in 2016, millions of documents that were meant to be confidential were leaked. They revealed the true owners and inner workings of directors of hundreds of offshore companies. They were called the Panama Papers. So let's go back in time and see what the leak can tell us about our people of interest. Four of them are there. They have a history together and appear to be running a network of non-Milton companies across the globe. But many of these companies have something in common. They're linked to an office block in Tbilisi called the Pixel Building. The paper trail ends here. Not gonna lie, I'm good. I, I like how stuff be built sometimes. It's a raw building. I ain't even gonna lie to you. It's a shame, <laughs> but nevertheless. Throughout all of our Panama Papers investigations, we've analyzed thousands of offshore documents. And one person appears to have founded or registered many of these early non-Milton companies, Mr. David Kezrashvili. But who is this Mr. Kezrashvili? He's a former Georgian politician. He was defense minister during the war against the Russians in 2008. When he left office, he started his business career. Based in London, he can't return to Georgia as he was found guilty of corruption in what he claims is a politically motivated case. Accepting this, the British courts refused to extradite him. In Georgia, he's remembered by some as Mr. Offshore, and the leaked non-Milton company data shows he sat at the center of this network of offshore companies. Our men were given senior positions in these companies, which Mr. Kezrashvili registered all over the world. Multiple roads seemed to lead to him. Oh, David, she's knocking at your front door, okay. This is like a drama series, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With lots of turns and loops and you gotta pay attention or you're gonna be confused. We've been invited back here by Europol, who have zeroed in on some of the same people as us, and now we're joining them on call center raids. Simultaneous actions are taking place in Ukraine, Albania. Now pulling up to where they are and catching them red handed. That's like them, those P-E-D-O stings where you catch them red-handed and show them their emails and them pictures and things of that nature. This is what this is going to be equivalent to in my mind. I'm just trying to connect dots and see what's similar. ...and North Macedonia. We have no idea where we're going. We were told to follow the car in front of us. The last time they did a raid like this, the bosses of the call center were tipped off. So everything depends on secrecy. We've driven into this parking they, garage and the German- No lie, they in some nice buildings, nice architect type, you know what I'm saying? And Georgian police are coordinating their actions. <laughs> Um, the prosecutors have just walked in, but he told us that the place has already been secured. Would you like to speak to us? 
about what what happened here? I can't understand. Anything. You don't understand anything I'm saying, even though you just responded to me in perfect English. Did you know that this was allegedly a scam? No. I'm not wishing you to take this video right now, and I'm not responding on your questions. What What was the brand that you were selling here? We are quite happy with the situation right now as far as we can examine all the materials and the people. We see some evidences, clear evidences for a German desk mm -hmm. as far as the uh, German market is targeted and obviously we see quite good hints to such. Yeah, these ain't like the call centers I be seeing sometimes on YouTube. This is like a, this this is a fit official looking, like, you know, like the rest of everything they got going on. The Milton Group. Sure, activity here. across Georgia. Activity here. Right now, there are 30 raids across Georgia. In the center of Tbilisi, they're hitting a company we already know, MG Capital. These screens are really interesting. Here you have a back office of a brand called EcoSales, and you have the names of people that they were calling to get money from them. And here you have four British names here. So you can see that this is just a call center that was allegedly scamming people all over the world. And let's see if we can see how much money they got from various people. Looking through our footage afterwards, I found a note. No liabilities, wants to buy a property, not discussing number, but has savings. Savings less than 10K, very p Should scam soon. For the German prosecutors, this has been four years in the planning, and now they've time talking about red -handed. to reflect. We know that, of course, for example, the FCA in Great Britain say scams are the biggest threat for private investors. But on the other hand, we see due to our actions and our investigations in the last years, that there are also some positive effects that the perpetrators are, are more careful and at least do not target the German market as much as they did maybe two or three years ago. The overall damage is still in the hundreds of millions. Probably we can talk about billions. That's crazy, man, because like, like the local scammers in the neighborhoods, you know, they moved from when the cities got tighter and they found out they just moved to a less, more, a more, a lesser developed city and they run the same stuff. But this is such on a high scale, they just move into a, a lesser country to run the scam on the entire country is crazy. <laughs> Not only in Germany, but all over the world. We noticed a lot of British victims on the computer screens in the call center. If you ended your investigation, where would that leave them? We have to be realistic. We can't save the world. It's, or it's already pretty hard work to, to save the German market. There should be some kind of law enforcement in Great Britain, as far as I know. So that's their main responsibility. And uh, to see it from a, from a legal perspective, it's not in our jurisdiction. The raids led the news in Georgia. Megaladze is our Mr. Green. He gave a press conference after one of the scam brands was raided in an office he owns. He says that his company rents out the space. Yeah, I was just about to say, like, you can rent out a space and not know what's going on in that space. 
Like they could tell you one thing and a whole nother thing could be going on. So I don't know if we could like blame him for anything. You know what I'm saying? Places and the offices to other companies, but he doesn't know what the company who rents the office really does. So wait, he's saying that he was just renting space to another call center, yeah. but he owns MG Capital. Yes, we know that he founded then MG. Ah, yeah, buddy. Nah, you can't. You can't escape this. Capital. And also, he mentions that. Uh, he was a um, partner, business partner of uh, David Kazarashvili. So we know that the links between these men go way back, thanks to the Panama Papers leak. Then, the pattern was that Kazarashvili was the link between our men. But if the real links were confidential before, might they be confidential again? So fast forward to the present. The men all seem to have been key figures in the Milton Group, running or owning tech companies and or the scam brand EverFX. But does Kezrashvili fit in now? Well, he's not really on the paperwork. This is what we can see. He's connected to this company, which used to own EverFX. Through his venture capital firm, he owned the branding and website for this tech company, which built the trading platform and website of EverFX. The email servers for his personal companies were held on the same private servers as those for EverFX, Axios, and New Age. He owns the building in Kyiv, where the original call center was moved to in 2020, and where they sold EverFX, and where Mr. Orange had an office, where many of these companies were housed and which was raided in the Europol action in Ukraine. And this gives us a hint of Kezrashvili's social circle. At a wedding in 2018, he was pictured with Mr. Orange and Mr. Red, as well as other key Milton figures. He also has interesting social media connections. Kezrashvili regularly likes and shares Facebook and LinkedIn posts from several tech groups, as well as from EverFX and its successor, Axions. And his Facebook friends have included at least 45. Okay, people got to stay on that internet. Get off the internet. Well, this this is, you can't even get off the internet with these, this company, but, but like your personal stuff, like they watching everything, man. Other people link to some of these companies. And of course, He's also Facebook friends with Mr. Pink, Mr. Blue, Mr. Green, and Mr. Orange. And Mr. Red? Well, that's his cousin. We went to Mr. Kezrashvili's 18 million pound house in London to see if he could answer these questions about his role. Um, I'm a journalist. I'd like to speak with David Kezrashvili. Is he available? He's not. He's not available. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. He wouldn't talk to us, but his lawyers make clear that Mr. Kezrashvili. I ain't even gonna lie. She ain't trying that hard. Really strongly denies any involvement with Milton or that he gained financially from scams. He says that EverFX was, to his knowledge, a legitimate business, and that connections we have found to the people and IT behind it prove nothing. I mean, I guess it really do per prove nothing. It's just like hearsay at the moment. You feel me? and Mr. Gogashvili strongly deny our allegations, saying that EverFX is a legitimate regulated platform. They deny knowledge of Milton or any connection between EverFX and the brands we identified, who they suggest have misused its source code and brand to confuse users. They say EverFX has never had a crypto wallet and has no control over how its third-party payment processors direct funds. Mr. Megalazzi said, I completely deny these allegations. I am not involved in any way with Milton. I have never owned call centers or any other businesses engaged in mis-selling financial products. 
Neither Mr. Benimini nor Mr. Todua responded to our questions. EverFX denied our allegations, saying that they are a legitimate and regulated platform where risks are fully explained. They you know, the crazy thing is they could have did all of this, then became legitimate at one point, or, you know, they got was not illegitimate, became legitimate, and then was legitimate again. It's, they, they, they got so much, they got such a windy road of, of a paper trail. Like, I don't, you can't connect this to, like, in a, in a courtroom, plus they got money for lawyers, like, in a courtroom, it's, I don't know. We investigated Barry's case and found he was responsible for his losses. In our anonymous case, they told us her losses were as a result of her moving to an unconnected company and that they fully cooperated with the FCA. The investigation Alex and I started has culminated in police raids on Milton offices across five countries. Closing down 15 call centers. But only five suspects were arrested in those countries, all just employees. Which is little consolation to the victims of Milton. I feel completely embarrassed at how, how well I was fooled. I just don't want my friends to know how stupid I've been. I've always worked really hard for everything I've earned in my life. Losing $30,000 to a, to a bunch of scammers, I was absolutely devastated by it. I just don't feel that I could confidently trust anybody again. I don't blame her. Or him, or, I it's mean her. taken us well over a year to uncover the identities of some of the biggest players we believe are involved in this billion dollar scam. Wading through this complex and sophisticated tangle of shell companies, digital evidence, and crypto wallets, we felt able to name them for the first time. Since the raids, Alex has been tracking Milton's crypto wallets. So their volume is lower. The volume is lower. So that means the raids have had a big impact. Yes, I think it is because we see a very significant decrease in the turnover. Good for victims. Good for victims. So the raids did have an impact. They probably have a slight impact. They have a momentarily, momentarily, moment, moment, like they impact for a moment. But then they regroup and getting smarter. You know what I'm saying? It has to be stopped fully all at once. But our recent analysis suggests the scams are picking up again. Now at nearly 85% of what they were. So can this and billion dollar smarter. scam ever be stopped? The money that flows from these kind of crimes through the offshore world into the pockets of a small number of people is so attractive and so corrupting that it's incredibly hard for any society and any political system to conjure up the wherewithal to stop it. Four months after the raids, we're not aware of any prosecutions of any of the people we've identified. But Alex and I are not about to give up. You know, it's crazy. The people in charge are supposed to be prosecuting and looking and solving this case. They'll, they, they've probably seen this. They probably couldn't execute right now because they want to take credit for it. You know, if they watch this, then go do that, then try to, you know what I'm saying? They got to do their due diligence as well. You hear me? Plus, they don't want to give credit. <laughs> it's a huge find. You know what I'm saying, man? Let me know if you, if you had anybody close to this and got affected by it, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn your post on down.